In this video, we're gonna actually go through the grading process for 10 books that I'm getting ready to press and clean and send off to CGC. A seller reached out to me and had an idea for a fun video. He said, I'd like to sell these books through your shop. And we worked out a deal um, to where I'll get them graded and pressed and cleaned and then they're gonna be for sale when they come back through my shop. So stay tuned for that video. We'll do an unboxing to see what grades uh, they actually got. We'll do our predictions here in this video and then we'll have a separate video um, unboxing them and they'll actually be available for sale. In a lot of cases, we're gonna use this book right here, the CGC Guide to Grading Comics. There's a lot of different ways to grade comic books. There's a lot of different grading standards and each grading company uses a different set of standards. So since these books are gonna be graded by CGC, we're using CGC standards. Um, and so we'll go through this book. There is a ton of nuance with grading. Um, this book is about 300 and something pages and a huge chunk of that is dedicated just to the different defects and how that can affect the grade. Hundreds of pages. I mean, not every crease is the same. Not every bend is the same. There's different severities. So there's tons of nuance that goes into it. And videos like this are really helpful if you're interested in grading. You just gotta get in the habit of doing it. So that's what this video is all about. Just more practice on the whole grading process. Before we hop into it, I wanna remind you we have a massive whatnot show. Uh, when you're watching this video, it'll be this Friday, July 28th, at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my whatnot. Link down in the description for $15 towards your first purchase. We're gonna have over 20 CGC giveaways. We're bringing back the wheel. So if you win two giveaways in the same show, you get to spin a prize wheel for your chance at a grail somewhere north of $1,000. I still need to pick out that grail. And then every purchase in that show is an entry onto a separate prize wheel. At the end of the show, we will spin that. So one way or another, someone's gonna spin the wheel at least once and can possibly walk away with a, a book valued at over $1,000 for free. It has happened before in my shows. I've given away a thousand dollars on the wheel spin to my show. Uh, so it does happen and it, hopefully it'll happen this Friday as well and hopefully it will be uh, you that's the lucky winner. Also we have a monthly giveaway here on the YouTube channel. If you subscribe, comment, and like you're entered to win a free slab this month. We're giving away two slabs in fact and we also have a monthly giveaway over at BriceComics.com. If you sign up for the newsletter over there you're entered to win a free slab each month and it's where you get first access to new collections as they come through like the books that you see in this video, uh, eventually when they come back from CGC will be announced through that newsletter. And this month we're giving away an Incredible Hulk annual number one. So with that said, let's flip the camera around and take a look at these books. Starting off with Marvel premiere number 15, the first appearance of Iron Fist. And I have gloves on here. It's a really, really hot day here in Paradise, California. I'm kind of clammy um, and I don't want to get any oils or fingerprints on the books. Usually it's better to use um, just your bare hands that are clean and dry, uh, but we're not getting that here in late July in Northern California. There it is, folks, the first appearance of Iron Fist. I want to try to show you guys the first appearances of these characters when possible in these books uh, to make this video even more entertaining and appealing. So this is a special copy because it's a Mark Jeweler. So Mark Jeweler's inserts uh, were distributed at a much, much lower rate. I think it's something around 5% and they are this kind of cardstock centerfold that's right here at the centerfold. You can see the staples there in this book. So it makes it uh, super, super rare and highly collectible. So this book has a little bit of foxing uh, slash staining or color rub. I don't know what it is. Sometimes those three things are, um, you know, hard to differentiate between. Um, but some of this can be cleaned up with the dry clean and then some of it I think will probably um, stick around and still be there even after a dry clean. Um, and that will affect the grade a little bit. So on a book like this, what I usually do is take an overall uh, impression of the book. Um, when you get into the grades that are like uh, 6-0, uh, 8 -0, pretty much anything like 8 -0 or below, uh, you start with that overall impression. Um, and that's something that you develop over time. And my overall impression of this book um, would be somewhere around like the 8-5 range uh, because of the spine wear, um, the minor finger bends increasing on the front cover, 
Um, it's like a, a VF copy, somewhere in that VF range. And then from there, you go, uh, you know, up or down uh, based on, you know, your observations of the defects. Um, so if we were to start um, at like an 8.5 for this book um, and say that these minor uh, color breaking spine ticks and creases these right here when it's around the staple is actually considered a staple tear you can see all different kinds of staple tears through different eras they really change bronze age versus silver age uh, silver age you, you can get some some really severe staple tears modern age you can get staple tears where it are, are really really minor and it can actually still get a 9.8 in the modern age. I think we might have an example of that in this video. Uh, there's a crease right there that can be improved with a press, but it won't completely go away. So if I add some humidity and press this book, it'll flatten those out, but you'll likely still see little tiny color breaks and things uh, right there. So this book can benefit uh, a little bit from a press. We'll go ahead and, and do that. The other thing that you want to look for, especially when you get into like the super high grades, if you're in like an 8085, you know, a, a finger bend, which is when it comes from reading the book. So typically like if you were to open the book, I'm not going to actually do it here, but if you open it and then the, the cover bends around where your finger is, that's called a finger bend. So typically in like that 80 range, it's not going to matter too much if there's slight finger bends or little creases. It's still going to be an 80. So sometimes you get those out in an 80 and it still comes back an 80. So I think this book is somewhere in the 80 range, 80, 85 uh, after uh, a clean and press. And that's all things considered. That's considering, um, you know, this little bit of staining. I'll have to see, you know, how that cleans up uh, after I give it a dry clean. Um, but I think somewhere in the 8085 range for that one. Here we have Conan the Barbarian number 23. This is the first appearance of Red Sonia. And so here it is, you guys, in all our glory, the first appearance of Red Sonia. It says, to spew forth broad-bladed death. Ho, dog brothers, let's show the gutless pigs how the warriors of Pa Disha can fight. And there she is, first appearance of Red Sonia. And then it says, by Tarim, we'll give the devil's scarlet wine to drink this dawn, or my name's not Red Sonia. So there you go, guys. Um, as far as the presentation of this book, what we're looking at uh, grade-wise, it looks super clean. On the back here, there's some minor soiling and stuff. A little uh, minor fingerprint right there that we might be able to get off with a dry clean, uh, so clean it up a little bit. And so from first impression, I would say that it's about a 9.0. Uh, when you look at the spine, there's uh, some wear all along the spine, some color breaking spine ticks, some wear on the corners, but overall it's really sharp, so I'd put it at like a 9.0. And then at closer inspection, you see right here, and this is what you, very often see in like a, a nice 9.0, 9.2, 9.4 even, and then you take a closer look and you see that there is a color breaking crease on the corner where the corner of the page got grabbed and then folded over creating a crease. According to the CGC guide here, a crease uh, can have a grade range anywhere from a 4.0 to a 9.8. So this one is super broad because there's so many different types of creases. The severity of the crease is broad. A light crease nearly resembles a bend, while a heavy crease is usually hinged, at which point the paper on either side of the crease curves independently of each other. Hinge creases usually occur at reader's creases and subscription creases. The distinction between a bend and a crease is determined by whether the paper fibers have been broken along the seam. Some creases do not break color, particularly on golden age covers. Very tiny edge creases are sometimes classified as wear or scuff. Um, in addition to its location and severity, a crease's effect on grade is determined by its length, or in the case of multiple creases, accumulated length. A diagonal one inch crease breaking color on the front cover can lower a grade to an 80, while the same length of crease along the back edge of a cover can achieve an 85. So I was really surprised to hear that, that the same crease on a front cover versus a back cover can be the difference between an 80 and an 85. And it just 
just goes to show how much nuance and subjectivity goes into comic book grading. And um, it's just something to be really, you know, well aware of. Not all creases are created equal. The severity of it, where it's located, it all comes into play. And then on top of that, you have the, the individual preferences of that grader. So this crease right here, I would say, is just about a one inch crease. So we know a one inch crease on the front cover, according to that book, isn't getting anywhere above an 8.0. So I think that this book, in the condition that it's in, I think an 8.0 is uh, about the range uh, that this book is going to get. All right, let's go to a modern book, Batman Beyond Number One, the first appearance of Terry McGinnis. And um, just an awesome, awesome book to see. This one is a modern book, so it's gonna be a lot easier to grade. Um, you can see on the cover here, there's, it's a really clean cover, maybe a slight finger mend right there uh, that I, you know, I'll give it a little safety press and that'll probably come out. All of the corners are sharp on this. Let's take a look and see if we can see any spine ticks. No spine ticks so far. Try to catch the light on this. We go all the way up the spine and oh, we got so close, but right there at the top, there is a small color breaking crease. I think this can be improved with a press. It'll be flattened out, but it'll probably have the tiniest of color breaking creases that's left behind um, afterwards. So I'll give this one a safety press, but I think it's likely um, a 9.6 because of that on the front and looking at the back here the back looks really clean these tiny little ticks right here on the back where that light is catching it right there those are uh, spine ticks but those would be allowed in a 9.8 to that degree they're very very minor you can have several of those and still achieve a, a 9.8 so this one is a 9.6 like maybe 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 a 9.8 if a press does a magical thing with that uh, spine tick. So here is Amazing Spider-Man 129, first appearance of the Punisher. And there he is in all his glory, the first appearance of the Punisher on the splash page here. Amazing Spider-Man number 129 from 1973. Um, so this book is definitely in high grade from uh, first glance. Uh, I would say it's probably in you know, the 9.0, the near mint range, like maybe, you know, we can start at a 9.4 from first glance and say this is about a 9.4. And the reason I say that is just like the edge there in the corner, you can see there's just a very small amount of wear. Um, so I wouldn't put it at like a 9.8 range to start just from first glance. And you can tell there, there are like a few, um, you know, spine stress lines, um, color breaking and then right here on this staple we have uh, staple tears very minor at the top and the bottom of that staple is a staple tear so here in the cgc guide there's tons of different defects associated with staples you got staple altered staple detached staple extra from manufacturing sometimes that doesn't affect the grade at all when it's from manufacturing and this is really interesting info there on that staple extra after manufacturing. So there's a big difference if there's an extra staple from manufacturing or after. You've got staple holes. All of these staple impressions, staple missing, um, all of these have different effects on the grade. Staple poking through the cover. Here you can see a giant size X-Men example with uh, the very common uh, you know, staple because this is a, a square bound book. So um, you could still achieve a 9.8 with the staple poking through cover, um, depending on the severity. Staple recessed, staple removed, staple rust, staple tears. That's what I was looking for. So the grade range uh, is, oh, 7.0 to a 9.6. I was wrong earlier. I said you could still achieve a 9.8. So, um, I'm confused by that because I've gotten modern 9.8s that came back 9.8 with staple tears and I asked CGC about it and they said this is a known defect for that book and uh, it's allowed in 9.8. So uh, no big surprise, they contradicted themselves here in the book, uh, <laughs> but um, 7.0 to 9.6 uh, depending on how big and severe 
the staple tear is. So this is super minor, so it's only gonna affect the grade a little bit. Maybe it would take it from a 9.6 to a 9.4, or a 9.4 to a 9.2, and if we started at a 9.4 because of those, now we would be at a 9.2. And then if we look closely on the back cover here, it's kind of hard to catch in the light, but there is definitely um, a large crease right here. It's about a one inch crease on this corner. Um, but it probably doesn't break color. This book has already been pressed, um, but there's some more wear and stuff there. Um, I, I happen to know from the seller that this book has already been pressed. And a close inspection here, right here, there's another large color breaking crease. And it's hard, I'm not really able to get it on camera, but when you look at it under a ma magnifying glass, you can tell it's been worked on, um, probably by whoever press this the first time and there's a little bit of color loss along that crease it's like a little bit of the yellow has been removed there and there's also on this corner uh, there was a, a crease where the page had been fold folded over and it appears like it's been worked on and you can kind of see right there um, that there's a little bit of color loss there's a little bit of white showing through um, that yellow so those things considered with all of those creases, I think that this book taps out at an 8.5 um, and it might get as low as an 8.0. New Teen Titans number two, first appearance of Deathstroke. And if we look in the splash page there, there it is, the first appearance of Deathstroke, the Terminator. Um, awesome book, this is a newsstand edition. And from first glance, I would say that this book is a 9.8. That's my first impression. Um, so we're starting with a 9.8 and then we will see if we can find any flaws uh, that deduct it from there, um, starting with the spine. Um, the corner, little tiny bindery tears and fraying like that down in the corner is allowed in a 9.8 at the top and the bottom. Um, no spine ticks yet, clean staples, Super, super minor staple tear. I think that would be allowed um, in a 9.8. This staple is very, very slightly recessed, um, but it would be allowed in a 9.8. I'd be nervous to press this book um, because I wouldn't want to make that any worse. And then there at the top, um, you can see a little bit of wear at the top corner, but again, a little bindery tear at the top and the bottom is allowed in a 9.8. So. On the front, the only real flaw I'm seeing is right here. And you can see, if I can catch the light, there's just like some non-color breaking creasing going on. I think that would bring it down to a 9.6. Um, so if I give this one a press, I, I'm a little nervous because of the staple, but you know, I'll just do a gentle press and um, hopefully that will clean that right up. And then we might actually have a 9.8 on our hands. And if I, I looked at the back, um, this is a little bit of a miscut. So a miscut is when, you know, um, the book isn't cut exactly right. Um, it is allowed uh, in a minor degree like that in a 9.8, so no problem there. Um, you can also see the evidence of the miscut here because of that white line on the front. It is allowed in a 9.8. Uh, so this one has a, a real shot at a 9.8 if we press out that little non-color breaking crease on the front. Here's the boys number one. First appearance of the butcher and so many more. What an awesome book to see. I mean, uh, from Dynamite Entertainment, just an epic, collectible after just how popular and how awesome that show is. Um, this book, I, I, from first impression, I would say is a 9.8. Um, it's a modern book, so it's a lot easier to grade. There's a very, very minor amount of cockling on the cover. That's those little ripples and stuff that you see. Um, but that is allowed in a 9.8. Um, I don't see any spine ticks on this book. It's just clean. One thing that I do see that is very common with modern books is the little white line that goes down the length of the spine. As you can see there, it's a little bit of wear, and that's from this, uh, these books are shipped raw like this in a big stack in a cardboard box, and the edge just kind of shakes and rubs along that cardboard box all the way down the interstate until it's delivered to the retailer. And so that little white line is also sometimes caused um, just from folding the book in half and the cheap 
paper just breaks all the way along the spine. So it is allowed in the 9.8. Um, and that's really the only thing going on with this book. I, I think this book has a real shot at a 9.8. All right, Batman 423, this iconic Todd McFarlane cover. This is the second print as indicated by the thing here and also in the indicia reads second printing um, it's the exact same cover as the third printing the only way to tell the difference i believe is right there on that indicia so from first glance um you know i could see some spine ticks and stuff um i could you know i guess we would start at a nine eight and then we very quickly go down from there uh, right here there's a sharp um, indent. It, it, if it's a finger, it almost looks like something maybe was set on top of the book. Um, that's going to bring it down uh, quite a bit. Um, and then, like, there's not a lot of leniency for a color breaking thing like that. And then we've got spine ticks all along the front. This also isn't going to come out with the press. I mean, uh, it just it's just is what it is. It's um, so I think this book is probably about a 9.0, unfortunately, because of um, the spine and the finger bends and creases and stuff. So about a 9.0 on this one. All right, Adventure Comics number 293. Now this book, I would say from first glance, is like in the 9.0 range uh, because of just like some general wear. You can see along the spine, you can see along the spine of this one, um, some wear that's different than that white line that I talked about in modern comics from distribution. This is from, you know, being read and, you know, misstored over time. Uh, just a little bit of wear along the spine. So if we started at a nine, the big thing that's going to deduct from this cover here is the creasing right here on the cover. So that's about a one inch crease and there's several of them. Um, so that could bring it down to about an 8.0. Then you also have some wear down here on the bottom, another crease right there. So I think that this book taps out at an 8.0. Um, maybe you get lucky and get an 8.5 on this one, but I think, I think it taps out at an 8.0. Tales of the Teen Titans, number 44, the first appearance of Dick Grayson as Nightwing. There you have him on the cover. And I would say from first glance, this book appears to be in the near mint range like from first glance like nine six because of maybe some tiny stuff that i see it's got some really nice sharp corners um you know i'm just hesitant to start anything at a 9.8 why don't we start at a 9.8 because it looks really sharp we'll start at 9.8 and see if um there's any defects at all um so the cover here i'm not seeing any finger bends at all Corners are super sharp, no wear along the bottom, tiny, tiny bit of cockling, that's uh, okay in a, in a 9.8. Uh, so let's check out the spine, that's gonna be the, the biggest of, uh, offender. Uh, the spine looks really good so far. Staples look good. Maybe some tiny, tiny spine stress lines right there. I think that would be allowed. This staple is what concerns me. There's maybe, you know, a, the tiniest of spine ticks or yeah, staple tears is technically what it would be right there. So maybe a 9.6 because of that. So I think this book has a real shot at a 9.8, um, probably 9.6 at worst, unless I'm just totally missing something on this one. All right, so this is our last book for this video. We have uh, Avengers Annual number 10. And from first glance, this thing looks like a 9.8. So we're gonna start at 9.8 and deduct from there. Um, we'll start here with the spine and the corners. A little bit of wear on the corner. I would say that that's allowed in a 9.8. Staples look super clean and tight. Um, I don't see any spine ticks whatsoever along this spine. That staple looks really sharp and tight. No staple tears on that, working up the spine. Ah, the, that's always at the very end, you hold your breath, there's a little bit of a color breaking crease right there. In fact, it's the entire, that, that's a tear. That is a tear in the front cover. Um, ooh, that's rough. That's a tear. That's gonna that's gonna bring it down um, 
probably, I don't know, at least to a 9.2, a small tear like that. Really a shame, um, as high grade as this book looks, um, yeah, I'd say. And then on the back as well, uh, we've got some odd, oddly enough, probably like the smallest stains I've ever seen. Uh, very, very small stains, but you got two right there. And then in this corner as well, there's also a very little stain, which when you open up the front cover and take a look, you can see it in that, in that corner right there, a little bit of a stain. So I think this book would be, I don't know, a 9.2, maybe a 9.0 when you factor in the stains. It's definitely going to present really well for whatever grade it does finally get. So that's it for this video, you guys. I hope that that was helpful to some of you. As you can see, there's tons of nuance with grading and it's something you just gotta practice. You know, pick up the, this book. I highly, highly recommend it and read it. There's tons of other helpful information here. If you're serious about collecting, if you're serious about this hobby, this can be the key to help you make wiser decisions, how to, to make more money in this hobby. Uh, highly recommend picking it up. I don't get a kickback or anything from this. Um, it's just good resource. It We've waited decades to get this information and we finally have it. And so uh, I recommend that you pick this up. Uh, don't forget we have that massive whatnot show July 28th at 5 p.m. Link down in the description for $15 towards your first purchase. I will have items in the buy now for 15 bucks. So if you're new to whatnot, you can come pick that up. Tons of giveaways. It's gonna be a banger, should I say banger? We're gonna do a let's go banger giveaway uh, in that show as well. Um, and we always have the monthly giveaway here on the YouTube channel. Subscribe, comment, and like, and you're entered to win that. And sign up for the newsletter at BriceComics.com. Thank you as always for sticking with me to the end of the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye. So when is this video gonna go up? Uh, Monday or... Um, <laughs> Uh, Monday or, uh, <laughs> Monday or, uh, it's coming Monday, Monday or, uh, Monday or what?